Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings viewers. Welcome once again to our devotion. My name is Wisdom Messiah Pili. Shall we pray before we start? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, up above, we are so thankful for an opportunity such as this one to start your head. May the Holy Spirit, the greatest teacher, guide us and be with us. It is our solemn request in your name. Amen. Today, our subject of consideration shall come from the book of John. John chapter 5, reading from verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of the sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the waters was made well of whatever disease. We find an interesting story here in the book of John that uh, there was more of a hospital, a more of a hospital whereby people would just come, come in numbers to that pool to get healed. The Bible records and says, people will come in numbers uh, in, verse, in verse, verse 3. Some will be blind, some will be lame, some will be paralyzed. Whatsoever disease, people will just come there and flock in numbers to get healed. Then I was thinking to my, I was thinking and myself saying, imagine uh, they were lame people, paralyzed and blind. These people uh, have different kinds of maladies and disease, but there is only one common denominator in all of them. They are all sick. Some might, some might be having flu, but imagine, as we know, if someone has got influenza, the only problem is with the nose, but all the body parts are just strong. Some were having uh, maybe a headache, it was only the head, but all the body parts were what? Were just but working. Then the Bible says, the paralyzed were also there. The kind of paralysis I know, someone won't be, even be able to move. Will be just packed there, you know, waiting for someone to just move you from this one point and place you another point. From point A to point B, you rely on somebody else. So we had all there were all those kinds of maladies, people suffering from kinds of different diseases. I then decided to liken this into the it is a, a, to a church. Bethesda is our church. Why by people are coming in, flocking in every Sabbath to hear the word of God. Coming in during week of prayers, coming to midweek prayers, they are them to hear the word of God. They are all sick. The sick, the problem of sin is giving them a hard time. But then to my mind, what I have seen uh, with, with my few years in the church, I have seen those brethren who have got influenza, influenza, uh, when I'm saying influenza, we have got a smaller weakness. When they look to brothers, we have got a problem, problem of paralysis. Paralysis uh, symbolizing a serious weakness. For example, we have got a problem with lying. Then when you come to church, you see someone who is doing prostitution. You think you are better. No, sin is sin. You are all sick. So it happened in Bethesda that those who had influenza, they thought they were well. But my question, if they were well, what were they doing in Bethesda? The reason why they are still in Bethesda, it is simply because they were not well. So in church, we have such patients, people suffering from different habits, suffering from different sins. They are waiting for Christ to give them a remit. My brother, my sister, if you think you've made it through, don't chase someone away from the hospital. Let them stay there from the church. Don't be that cow which was called very nice, which used to move other cows outside the corner and it remains inside. No, don't be like that. Let the brother see Jesus. When you go down, an angel went down at a certain time in the pool and stayed at the heart. And whoever stepped in was made first. Before you move on to this first, 
since we have admitted that we are going to lack in Bethesda as a church, I have seen people, for example, I have seen people, you know, some people left Bethsaida without being healed because of people who were so talkative. Said, ah, no, I can't stay them because so and so has been talking so much. People have been criticizing me. People decided to leave beside them and they were not met well. There are some people who have moved out of the church because an elder or a deacon or whosoever, the talkers lead them, say something about them. There is someone who have left the church because they've gossiped them. No, my brother, no, my sister. Child of God, you can't do that. Stay there, stay in Bethesda until we are met well. It's just like going to a, a hospital. For example, you go to Johannesburg General Hospital. You know you are sick, then you are put on a queue. As you are sitting on the queue, then there is another patient by your side who is suffering, suffering from malaria. Then the person who is suffering from, from malaria, then they vomit on you. They just go like, then they vomit on you. Can you just imagine? Then you decide to leave the hospital because a patient has vomited on you. Then you go around telling people, nurses of Johannesburg General Hospital did not help me. Nurses of General of Johannesburg General Hospital are not good. They vomited on me. If you can ask for the truth sake, you find that it is not the nurses which vomited on you, but it was just but a patient. So I'm trying to say, when we're here in church, when we're still waiting for Christ to come and take us home, in this church, our fellow brethren who will gossip you, fellow brethren who will talk about you, some of you will be framed, some of you will be censured for things that you do not even do. No, brother, do not leave Bethlehem. Stay in Bethlehem. Do not leave the presence of God. Don't leave the church. Just stay there. You can't be dismissed. Surely you can't be dismissed by one patient. He's a patient like you. If he is really a saint, what is he still doing on planet Earth? So I'm trying to say we shouldn't miss heaven or we shouldn't miss those blessings that God has prepared for us. Because of what other people are saying. Stay them. When we go down with our, 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 our verse, then in verse 5. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there, he knew that he had already been in that condition for a long time. Imagine someone was in Bethsaida for 38 years. He was a man Probably he had a family. Can you just think about it? Who was taking care of his family when he was there in Bethsaida? 38 years sitting at the pool of Bethesda. You are complaining about, you have been not working for only three weeks. Then you have been complaining. You have not been working for just a month. You have failed to pay your fees in the university for just one semester. Then you have complained that God has forsaken you. No, my brother. Think about someone. Someone stayed in Bethsaida for 38 years. So in some of these things, before you complain, before you talk negatively about God, just think about other people who are in serious situations. The man has been in Bethsaida for 38 years. As if it's not enough, my Bible says, when Jesus saw him, he knew that he had been in that condition for a longer time. Children of God, Jesus knows all our troubles. Jesus knows all our shortcomings. Jesus knows all our problems. Jesus knows all our sorrows. Jesus knows all our disappointments. Jesus knows all about heartbreaks. Jesus knows all about betrayal. He knows all. He knows it all. When he saw him, he then asked a question. Do you want to be made well? Listen to this answer. My Bible is very interesting on this one. Verse 7. The sick man answered, saying, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And you can agree with me on this one. The man did not answer the asked question. The question is, do you want to be made well? Then the man goes on to say, say, I have no one to put me into the water. No, the man was not answering the question. The answer was supposed to be yes or no. Not telling stories. We need to know how to pray. Some people 
are not seeing answers to their prayers simply because they did not address their prayers to God well. They don't know how to pray. Imagine Jesus is standing there and he has a lot of people to attend to. Him. He asks the man, do you want to be made well? The man starts telling stories. Probably this man was beat. In other words, he was saying, Jesus, I have tried to move into the pool of Bethesda. Man, I've, I've tried. Unfortunately, sorry, he didn't say Jesus because he didn't know, he didn't know that it was Jesus. He said, man, I've been trying. No, I've tried it all. I've tried to put myself inside that pool. But while, I, while I'm trying to call them, someone steps in. Imagine he was paralyzed. And as we have said earlier, there were people who had just influenza, people have got headache. So he was trying, when he was still trying to move himself into the pool, someone just jumped into the water. So the man was bitter and angry. Some people, they don't have answered prayers because their hearts are full of anger. There are some people out there who are very bitter, very angry, still holding on to old, old crutches still holding to all those useless wounds, let it go and let God. Just let it go, let it go, let it go. This man was bitter. It's a lesson for you and me this morning. Think about someone we have not, we have not forgiven. Think about someone who is still pleading for forgiveness and you still haven't rendered that to them. The man needed to forgive first. The stone heart needed to melt first. He says, I have no one. Probably was even thinking about the family which he had led back home. But praised be God, Jesus looked beyond his sins and he saw his need. Jesus understands that this man is not, is not so sure about what he wants. Probably if it was you or me, if it was a human being asking that, we're going to pass. Because if you ask someone that you want man, then they just start telling you, ah, ah, money, money. I tried to apply in the bank. They rejected my loan. Imagine the question says, do you want money? The question should be, the answer should be yes or no. But Jesus did not leave this person. He says, rise, take up your bed and walk. Verse 9 says, and immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked. God be praised. After 38 years, the man was made well again. Can you imagine the same man which has been carrying him for 38 years? Jesus commands that men rise up now and carry this man. Rise up now and carry this man. When we are in sin, sin is always on top of us. But when Jesus steps in, we step upon sin, we just tremble upon sin. We walk with confidence. We walk with our shoulder, high stomach in. We just walk. We're not afraid of anything because we know that we have found Jesus. One man was made well after praying for wellness after that eight years. There's someone who is listening to this. Probably you are sick. We have been in that condition for quite some time. We have tried all the medications. We have tried everything. We have tried the doctors. We have tried the physicians. Do you not lose hope? Jesus knows your situation. I want to pray for you at this moment that, may, that, Jesus, that Jesus might heal you. He is helping. He will do it again. Jeremiah 8.22 Is there no balm in Gilead? Why then the, do, the health of the daughter of my people is not recovered? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, there are children who are sick in the world. Some of them, they've tried and failed. They've tried all the medications. They've tried all the remedies. Some of them are at home. They don't even have money to go to the hospitals. Heavenly Father, stretch your wounded hand upon your sons and daughters and make them whole again. Some of them have lost hope because it's been 38 years. It is our prayer at this moment that you may stretch your hand and heal them. It is our prayer in your holy name. Amen. <music>